Welcome to my channel. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, like, and share. It helps others to discover my channel. Hi everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Catherine Rule, and today I'm doing an artist interview with Kat Reifeis. Thank you, Kat, for coming. How are you? Good. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm hanging in there. It's a rainy day today, and you know, just um, excited to talk about Shibori with you. Yeah. Great. So tell the listeners and the viewers uh, a little bit about you and your practice. Well, my name is uh, Kat Reifeis. Um, I live in Beacon, New York. I have um, been, uh, I've had my line Katrin Reifeis since about 2007. Um, I've been dyeing and designing since then. Um, I really started off with just scarves, but now I do uh, dresses mainly. Um, and I just started last year uh, a line called uh, Wear Upstate. Um, it's based on living in upstate New York um, and it mostly focuses on simple silhouettes. Actually, both my lines focus on simple silhouettes, but uh, Wear Upstate focuses on simple silhouettes that are garment dyed and natural dyes. So I was really inspired about um, living here in upstate New York and, and meeting a lot of great people uh, that do a lot of natural dyeing locally. So that's where that line was inspired by. And then my Catherine Reifeis line is inspired by uh, mainly Japanese shibori. Uh, so patterns and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love Japanese shibori and I love natural it's dyeing fun. too. Yeah. Um, so how did you get started um, doing shibori and natural dyeing? Sure. Um, well, uh, Japanese shibori, I was at Massachusetts College of Art in Boston. And I went in as a painting major and then came out with a BFA in fashion. Um, I had taken a textile course as an elective and that's where we learned Bandani, which is from India, a Deary cloth, which is from Nigeria, but then also Shibori. And I just, I just fell in love with uh, Shibori and all the patterns you can create with it. So um, that's around the time I decided to go into fashion was because it kind, it kind of, Although dyeing my own fabric, it combined my love of creating my own fabric, kind of like painting, and then also my love for fashion. It was, I was able to combine the two. Um, so that's, that's what I did. I, I dyed all my textiles and, and then would um, use them to create uh, my fashion pieces with. That's so that's, that's how I came to know Shibori. Um, and also um, natural dyeing, I really didn't take up until I really moved here when I took a class. Um, I, I knew some of it. I'm sorry. I actually was teaching at the Textile Arts Center in Brooklyn when I lived there. And I'm sorry, I did take a class there on natural dyeing. Um, but really not up until I, I got up here into upstate New York to, did I really get interested and in learn from some people that live here in Beacon. Um, like uh, Laura Sansoni, uh, she... Uh, um, does some natural dyeing out of Common Ground Farm here in Beacon. And uh, common, she, common Ground Farm? Yeah, she teaches some natural dye classes, um, that, like, you know, using plants from the farm. Cool. Um, I also, she has a New York, is it, I have to look it up, <laughs> New York Textile Lab, um, where she works with farmers uh, to also um, uh, local farmers here as well for fibers. Oh, cool. Yeah, so she's great. Yeah, so it was, so that's where my Wear Upstate line came from. And that's, um, I just love natural dyeing and especially with the whole sustainable movement, which I think that's where fashion's going, you know, less yeah. is more. Yeah. Um, I still use acid dyes for my shibori, um, where the acid, um, the acid is uh, white vinegar. Okay. So it's not too toxic, but you know, it really, really want to get away from, um, maybe not always get away from that, but do less of it. Um, right. So, so that's a long explanation for that. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so when you say you use vinegar as the acid, mm -hmm. it, you're, you, are you using, what else are you using? Is it pre-reduced or is it natural? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so for my silks, I dye them with something called acid dye. Um, oh, basically okay. powder and then the vinegar is the mordant to um, allow the, uh, um, the dye to it uh, adhere to the cloth that helps uh, do that process. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Um, and 
for your indigo, do you usually use pre-reduced or do you use like a natural? I usually use pre-reduced um, because especially when I'm doing a lot of production work, it um, is very consistent, um, the pre-reduced indigo. And um, I I've personally have had trouble keeping an, a natural indigo dye bath in the past going, but I, I that's my goal for next summer. Um, so I can maybe do one and keep it outside because it also has um, a nice smell to it. So, <laughs> um, so you know, when I was yeah. living in Brooklyn, I like I tried it. I'm like, I don't think I could do this in an apartment, you know. So right. now that I have a house and I, I just still haven't gotten around to it. Um, I might be a little squeamish about it. I don't know. But I would love to get into natural indigo too. I mean, when I see other people do it, it's just gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. I'm always interested to know like people's um, recipes. Like I have a recipe that I use that works for me, but it seems like there's just so many ways to do it. And yeah, yeah. You know, there's no real like right way. No, no. Um, in my opinion, so. No, um, I, don't, I agree. Um, and I, I also really like pre-reduced for just like that exact reason. I'm in a, an apartment and mm -hmm. you know i have a fire escape I, I guess i could have the vat going uh i have the stuff to do it right. i i've always i'm like i'm like teetering on the edge just like oh i should do it i should do it maybe as soon as i get the ac unit out of the window and i can go onto the fire escape it's like <laughs> it's just logistics um yeah so anyway, um, well, yeah, and it's also it's a living organism. If you think about it, you know, you got to keep tending it. The temperature's right. Some, like we were saying, you were saying, like some you have to use lye, which I'm not really into using. But then you can also do a fructose one where you use banana. So yeah, there's a whole variety. Just got to find what works for you and your space. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a real art form. Yeah, for real. Um, so. Tell me a little bit more about your like design process. Like how do you start? Cause you have like a full blown fashion line. Um, so you, how do you start from beginning to end? Um, usually it's uh, two things. One is either the shibori pattern that I want to do dictates, dictates the silhouette or the silhouette um, dictates what pattern I can do on it. Um, like I love dots absolutely adore dots. Um, so I wanted to do this all over dot pattern. Um, and, and usually my silhouettes are simple because I do want the pattern to show through. Um, so I don't try to do anything with a lot of seams or bust arts that, um, but um, I'll show you, I'm going to bring my, yeah. <laughs> I want to see. Yeah. So like right now, this is what I'm working on this particular dress. Oh, nice. It's silk. Um, so I haven't put a piece of together yet. I still have to cut out the back pattern, but it's a very, again, a simple silhouette based on a caftan I did this summer. Um, there's the sleeve. Uh, and I just love the all over dot pattern. Yeah. Um, but right now also looking at this, like, oh, wouldn't it be fun to do a sporadic dot, sorry, a sporadic dot pattern where you have dots down here and then maybe one on the shoulders. So that's another idea. Once you get start making things, it, it's it's like a precursor to like inspiring you to do a lot more. Um, but I also love like a simple dot pattern like this. Yeah, I feel like that's like your classic that's, look, right? Yeah, yeah. This is, yeah, this is my like the, the, uh, my bread and I don't want to say bread and butter, but yeah, it's like this is kind of feel like what this is what I'm known for. This particular it's simple so that was inspired by the Japanese kimono. I mean, basically it's just rectangles pieced together. Um, and then there are ones where it's one, um, where is, oh, here it is. Like the silhouette I wanted to do was this particular silhouette where it has a seam just above uh, the, um, the bust area. And I wanted to have, you know, stripes go one way and then stripes go another. Oh, so, cool. so the silhouette is what determined where I put the pattern. That's nice. So do you have a lot of uh, wastage when you are doing these kinds? Not really, because I really try to maximize as much as possible. Yeah, good. And then I usually keep scraps and I'll donate them to like, if anybody wants quilts or, or I use them for inspiration or I've been using them to um, uh, tie like, uh, if I have strips, I tie them on a rope and I'll use that as like a um, swag. 
Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's cute. So yeah, it, it really depends on what's happening, like what pattern, patterns can determine the silhouette or the silhouette can determine the pattern. Um, so that's kind of how I start. That's cool. Um, yeah. So do you work mostly in silk or do you also work? I love silk and I love how it dyes. Um, I am, uh, I do, I am trying to move, move a little bit away, not move away from that, but like, okay, I gotta try some new stuff. So I'm going to be working with cotton silk blend, mm. um, next. Um, I love dyeing in hemp actually. Oh. Hemp is gorgeous to dye. Um, I love dyeing it in indigo or fiber reactive dyes is another uh, type of dye I sometimes use. Um, cotton. Um, there is a dress I want to do for next summer where um, another technique, which I've been teaching myself, I got a, I downloaded a tutorial off of the web is um, clay resist. So this is a cotton hemp Ooh, dress. Cool. And you can just see the dots. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know, I'm trying to angle it. Those are uh, clay resists. So I sewed the garment together first, uh -huh. put the clay resist on, and then dyed it in a fiber reactive dye. Um, wow. That's another technique I'm interested in doing too, is clay resist. Is um, that like, um, I've seen like paste resist before. Yeah, this is, is um, similar. I, I think it's like a, a similar pro, um, the ingredients are different, but I'm, I'm sure it's a similar process. Like I, um, um, like I use, uh, I, if I pronounce this correctly, I'm looking up at my supplies, acacia powder. <laughs> okay, acacia um, powder. Acacia powder, uh, bentonite clay, and then uh, Epsom salt, and there's another clay I use. But um, cool. And I, I, you know, just Googling Instagram, I saw somebody doing clay resist. I'm like, oh, you know, I love dyeing, but I'm like, oh, I'm looking for something else I can do too that I can incorporate yeah, yeah. into what I do. So clay resist um, just seems like the thing I, I want to try to go forward with. Yeah. Fun. Well, that's yeah. Fun. So yeah, it's like, that's the fun thing about dying and especially like having a line that's centered around it's like you can always be revolving evolving yeah. like your process and like getting inspired by new things I think that's like really cool and I love all those pieces you just showed us so oh, do, thank you, you. do you sell them mostly online or do you sell them in uh, boutiques and where can people find them if they want to go by um, my website it's um uh catrin .com okay or um, whereupstate.com will bring you to the same website. Um, but I also sell to a couple stores right now. Um, let's see, two in Brooklyn and one here in Beacon. Okay. Uh, but mainly on my, st um, but mainly online. Uh, right. Yeah. Especially probably right now. Um, yeah. 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 Some stores have closed, which has been unfortunate. But. I know it's really, it's really hard right now for small businesses, especially yeah. that brick and mortar. So I feel for them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put your website down in the show notes. So oh, if you guys want to check out her line, please go to her website. Um, I wanted to ask you what kind of, well, you kind of told us, but what kind of classes did you take and how self-taught are you? Do, do you do a lot of self-teaching stuff? Um, tell yeah, us about I mean, that. I am a curious person. So, but um, definitely with mass art, um, definitely learned Shibori there, but I, I did take a couple of classes on my own when I lived in the city. Um, there's this great book, which I've owned since I graduated college. It's called uh, Shibori by Yoshika Wada. Yeah. It's like, I call it the Shibori Bible because she, um, she has so many wonderful directions and images in here. Of shibori and a history which is which is really cool too the history of shibori um so yeah kind of self-taught and and uh, the best way to self-teach is by taking classes but also just doing mm. um continuing to die but die again and take copious notes too i mean on the other side of my wall i have all my sheets with notes on like the dye the time the fabric what mordant i use what temperature i use uh, water temperature I used. Um, so yeah, so I, I always have a lot of reference material I can go back to. Um, 
but again, I'm a very curious person. So I always like to figure out how things work. So when I came across clay resist, I like, I read everything and downloaded everything I could and, um, got all the, the, the product and it, it's been fun. It's been fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I, I also like to just experiment and kind of figure things out and then just do them all over and over and over. And, um, you know, sometimes you make mistakes or, you know, oh, yeah, like, that's, it's like, that's a, learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I feel like it's important to not be afraid to fail. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, the first time I did clay resist, I'm like, why is this not working? And then I realized I totally forgot to include ingredients. <laughs> I was like, oh, look at me. Yeah. So it's like, it happens. Been there, done that for sure. Um, where do you look for inspiration? Oh my goodness. Um, oh gosh, it could be anywhere from nature, sunsets, um, the ocean breeze and how would that breeze go through your garment and what would your garment look like and make you feel as it rippled in the, the, the breeze. Um, uh, art, I mean, I, I love color. So when I think of art, I think of like big pieces by Mark Rothko. Mm. Um, Colorful pieces like that. Um, traveling. Um, I, gosh, I'm gonna. I miss traveling. Uh, I know. Uh, to all over the world just to see how people dress and or how they tuck in their, or how they tie like a knot at the base of their dress for a certain reason. That's like I find that inspiring. Just seeing people on the street. Um, that's one thing when I did move to Beacon. I didn't miss uh, just watching people in New York City. <laughs> I know about, that, about people watching like, oh my God, oh, that's so cool. That's a great idea. Like it, it's neat. Um, um, also inspired by other dyers just to see what they're doing. I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh, even when I teach classes um, and I see what my students come up with and I'm like, oh, that's so great. And I, and I think that's why I try to, I'm trying to teach myself clay resist because I, um, I want to be inspired again. It's like, I love Shibori, but I need to, broaden my horizon sometimes and feel unfettered by um, what I've done previously. And that's why I'm trying to also do different shibori patterns. So um, yeah, so inspired by a lot, I guess. Yeah. yeah, I also like just love seeing what people, like street, street inspiration. Yeah. That's yeah. to me like, that's like one of the most fun things. And you know, Instagram and stuff like that. Where oh yeah. Definitely. You can always see street, street inspiration from Instagram, right? Yeah. Speaking of which, I wanted to ask you, how has social media played a role in your career? Um, well, one, Instagram has helped me garner more sales, which has been wonderful. I think it's a great medium for, uh, um, showcasing your product, but also, um, Get, getting your product out there, but also educating your consumer about what you do. Mm. Um, like, I, I, you know, somebody could look at my dress and well, that's pretty, but why is the cost say $290? And it's like, at least on my Instagram page, I could tell you, well, it took me four to five hours just to manipulate the fabric, another few hours to dye. Then I cut out the pattern. Then I, 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 I sewed it. <laughs> and then I packaged it up and I ironed it and I put a hang tag on it and I, I sent it to you. I'm like, that's, that's a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the cost of the fabric to the cost of dyeing it, you know, it's, it's not just something that comes off an assembly line. You know, I, I do a lot of made to order. So um, I, I try to, you know, through Instagram, let my customers know why this might take a while. Um, and I, you know, try to edu basically educate them. That's what, that's what's been great about Instagram and social media is to, is to do that, especially if they don't see it in a store um, yeah. or something. And I think people like to really kind of be part of the process and see. Yeah, I do too. Um, what, what goes into it? It makes it like seem even that more special, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. Um, and what has been your biggest challenge when it comes to doing your art or your dying? Time. <laughs> yeah. Um, just because each piece is uh, quite a process, which I absolutely enjoy. Um, but I did, um, I have worked with sewers here upstate, but I did find someone just recently who um, doesn't mind sewing silk. 
Uh -huh. uh, that's been difficult to find someone who doesn't mind sewing silk. And uh, she, um, I just literally just picked up a sample from her last week and it was fabulous. So um, to give that part of the process away, because I don't need to sew. Right. Um, you know, I, I am really more the hands-on manipulating the fabric, creating the pattern. Um, and I don't mind cutting it because I'm very particular about, you know, where the layout of the pattern is. Um, but sewing is something like if, if I can find somebody that can sew well, that will alleviate a lot of time, free, hopefully free up a lot of time. Yeah, um, and sewing I have a four-year-old son. And so, oh. you know, it's, it's hard when um, mom and dad are both working at home. He's like, why isn't someone playing with me? And it's like, oh, oh. you know. So, um, you know, I wish I could have more hours in the day to do everything. Yeah. So time, I would say time. Do you right. usually like do it in the morning or late at night? Are you? Um, kind of, I guess, um, whenever. I like morning <laughs> and afternoon. Um, by 8.30, I'm, I'm asleep. <laughs> I'm putting my son down, I'm like, I'm out. Me too. <laughs> I'm a morning person through and through. Yeah, I think I woke up at six, I'm like, oh, this is lovely, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah time is a big, Thing. So I think everyone feels you. And what kind of advice would you give to someone who is just starting out with their dying journey? Um, or just starting a line, you know? Yeah. Um, ask for help. It's, it's okay to ask for help. I mean, um, I don't know how things are in New York City right now, but um, there are some great institutions down in the city that will help you um, or speak with you about starting your line. Um, I wish I could remember what it was called right now. I met with the guy too, just about how to price pricing your product. That's, That's hard. Who, yeah. Um, knowing how to price your product. Um, also knowing who you're selling for, knowing, um, you know, just come up with a one sentence statement about who you are. And that's, that's difficult too. Cause you know, I'm like, I want to be all this. And then I'm like, okay, no, I mean, you, you gotta, gotta focus a little bit. Yeah. Um, and if you're dying, learn a lot of processes. You never, you never know that one process may be like, oh, that thing that you really love. Um, you know, open, keep your mind open about that. Um, for dying, keeping a lot of really good notes. I mean, sometimes I like, oh, I'll remember how to do this. And I'm like, shoot, no, I do not. I don't remember the water right. temperature. I don't remember what pot I used. I was like, oh, so. Keeping notes is very important. Um, you seem really organized. So ah, that's, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> I don't feel that way, but thank you. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Uh, but um, yeah, that's uh, uh, ask for help. I mean, look, oh gosh, he's affiliated with FIT. His name mm. is Adam Ward. I think I'm getting that right. Um, oh, but I. He's affiliated with the Garment Center. Okay, that's more information. The Garment Center. Um, and just, you know, look to them for information, for help, or even go into the FIT library if they'll let you and, and see if you can speak with someone there. Or just even how to start your business. There are a lot of local, um, uh, there's a local program where I learned how to just even get a tax ID number. Uh, I was like, oh, thank God I could reach out to these people. Um, I forget their name too. But they were pro bono law lawyers who were helping out. Um, so there are a lot of great programs out there that will help you. you just you just gotta look for them, and, and it's okay to ask for help. I mean, mm -hmm. um, but also if you're starting off a new line, I feel like I've been doing this since 2007. But um, start small. You don't you don't need to be everything. You know, it's like what is your key focus? Um, like mine, I decided was just a simple silhouette. The dot pattern has been working really well for me, and um, let me just focus on that and get to be known for that. You don't have to right. be crazy things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's like a really good tip. It's just like do, do one thing or find something that works and then yeah. do it. And then, and then like build on that, you know, yeah. After, yeah. And, and like so, ask your customers who are buying that, like what else they would want. Yeah. <laughs> You know, oh, I ask them a lot, like, do you like the silhouette? What do you think the V-neck should be longer? You know, I'm like, I'm open for feedback because um, it's just me, but, you know, <laughs> in yeah. this little space, so I get a little insular. It's like, so feedback's great. Yeah, that's great. And um, 
so you you told me what your website was and what else do you have coming up for this fall i know it's kind of like a weird time but what's going on with you upcoming i have um i'm going to be doing a pop-up in cold spring new york uh for a weekend september 25th weekend so i'm excited about that um that's another thing i love to do is uh go out and meet customers you know just speak to them and just see what they like and um It'll be nice to see people. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. So that'll be that'll be fun. Uh, again, that's September twenty fifth in Cold Spring. Um, it's going to be at this location, a little small little space called Forty Four Main. Um, uh, I think that was it. <laughs> I feel like that, and, and I'm just working on Spring twenty twenty one. Yeah. Items, and uh, hopefully, I'll have some new fall items for. Uh, this pop up. I'm I'm looking to do loungewear. That's Some a really great nice idea. Fun pant. Yeah. So cotton silk like tops and bottoms. So we'll see how that goes. Do you ever work with knits? Nope. Can't stand knits. Oh. <laughs> I, I mean, well, sewing. Hard. I think it's like sewing them. Not not so much dyeing them. It would, it would yeah. be sewing them. Um, but I I um, I have worked with a, a company out of Long Island that, that does USA made USA sourced fibers uh, for T-shirts, oh. and they have done natural dyeing of those, and that's been fun. But I, I always go back to my wovens and my silk. You know, that's yeah, that's my love is. Cool, got it. Um, and you mentioned that you sometimes teach. Do you teach oh, upstate yeah. or in the city? Yeah. Yeah, I, I started off teaching at the Textile Arts Center in Brooklyn, and I loved it. I, I love them. They're great. Yeah. Um, they have a lot of great programs. And when I moved up here, I was so excited to learn that um, Garrison Arts Center in, in Garrison, New York, um, they were interested in having me teach. So that was, that's been wonderful. And then um, I've also taught um, a class at the Fall Kill Creative Works there in Poughkeepsie. They're oh. another great program, too. Um, so yeah, so I, I, I love teaching. I love when people open up their stuff, they're like, oh my gosh, it works. And it was like, it's just so exciting. It's, you know, and I miss that. Hopefully someday soon we could do in-person classes again. I know it's so fun to like do the reveals and like everybody gets yeah. to see what <laughs> yeah. everybody did and you know, yeah. they can kind of go home and try it again or do, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hear you. Um, I, I teach in Brooklyn at the Trestle workshops and oh. um, yeah, like it's not happening right now. So yeah. yeah, we've been, I've been moving them online, which is also, it's like a whole new thing, which is really yeah. fun. Um, but there is something nice about like being in the same room with everybody and kind of getting inspired and folding yeah. everything together and chatting. Usually people like come with their friend. It's like a fun thing to do on a yeah. Saturday yeah. with your friend. Like you're like, let's go to this workshop. And so yeah. good sense of community there. Um, oh, I, I do have an online tutorial I'm selling online. Um, it's like $7 and I teach um, with as many pictures as possible as I can put in there. Um, how to do Itajime, which is the folding of the fabric and clamping of a resist shape on top. So I do sell that on my website. It's at seven dollars with um, proceeds going to um, a portion of the proceeds going to um, either the oh, I'm terrible at remembering things. Uh, dig uh, dig deep water. Dig deep well. <laughs> Um, basically to two really great organizations that do two really great things. So, um, especially during this time, you know, it's like, um, that's great. It, that's a good hope, deal. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's great. And it, um, yeah, so people can check that out. Okay. Well, we'll definitely put the, uh, website link down below so people can oh, go and check out your downloadable Itajimi tutorial and also your line. Thank um, you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I think that's all the questions I have for you today. And thank you so much for coming. Oh, thank you for your time too. Thank you and for having It's great to just like get to know other dyers and um, connect. I, you know, I followed you on social media for like a long time and I've always thought your stuff was really pretty. So it's cool to talk to you and kind oh, of thanks. get to know you better. So anyway, thank you for coming. Oh, thank you.
thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, be sure to hit the subscribe button, like and share, and um, go visit Kat's website. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos for more Shibori tutorials and content.